I've built over 100 Python projects, but here are three that I would actually put on my resume. But first, let's understand the four key components that make a great resume project. Number one is that it needs to be easy to understand. No one cares about your resume projects if they don't understand what they are. Regardless of what you build, you need to be able to summarize it really simply, and in one sentence, someone should understand exactly what it is and why you built it. Number two is that it needs to have a wow factor. You need to build something unique that when someone reads the title, they immediately go, wow. That's cool, I wanna know more about that. If your resume projects are actually gonna help you out, people need to look at them or at least ask you questions about them and that's why you need a wow factor. Now number three is that they have to have been built for a purpose. The best resume projects solve a real world problem and have a story behind them. Sure, you can just build something to put on your resume, but it's a lot better in an interview to actually explain why you needed to build this and the type of problem that you're solving. Even less impressive projects that have a really good backstory usually stand out quite a bit more and they make it a lot easier for you to explain them with passion during an interview. And lastly, number four is that you need to demonstrate the capabilities employers are looking for. Especially at the junior level, employers want to know that you're capable of actually building something on your own and specifically using the tools, frameworks, or languages that are listed in the job description and that you'll be using on a day-to-day. -day. So feel free to change up your resume and tailor the projects you're putting there to the specific role that you're applying for. So now let's dive into the three Python projects I would put on my resume and why after an important message. Now when you do start building out these programming projects, you'll want to be working in an IDE. And that's not just because IDEs make your life so much easier, but because experience with them is actually something that a lot of jobs are looking for. Now look, there's all kinds of basic code editors out there that you could be using, but if you want to get to the professional level, you should really utilize JetBrains IDEs, which is the sponsor of this video. Whether you're working in Python, Go, Rust, Java, you name it, JetBrains has a fully featured professional IDE for you. These IDEs offer the best performance and speed and have impressive user interfaces. Take advantage of integrated debuggers, code analysis, quick fixes, and incredible AI assistance that supercharge your workflow. Not to mention features like instant search and navigation and an insane amount of plugins to customize your environment. Now, as you scale up and work on larger and larger projects, the importance of an IDE becomes clear and can have a massive impact on your performance and efficiency. You should really start building strong habits now by working with professional JetBrains IDEs by clicking the link in the description and taking advantage of these powerful tools. So when we're selecting projects for our resume, we want to choose a variety of different projects that showcase our knowledge across the different fields and skills that the employer is looking for. Now for a Python related position, usually this will be within something like web development or machine learning or automation. So make sure you select the specific projects that really fit the role. But if you're just doing a general resume showcasing your Python skills, you may want to have a few projects that cover those different areas. So that's exactly what I would do and why I've selected these three projects. I have one project that's a web development project, another one that's more AI and machine learning, and then one that's more automation and showcases that I can combine Python with different languages. So keep that in mind and let's roll into project number one here, which is a Django website. Now this website right here fits the criteria I listed before. It was actually built for a purpose and this purpose was to facilitate something called a code jam. Now, Code Jam was a monthly coding competition I ran a while ago, and this was actually a community project that a lot of people built. Now, full disclosure here, I did not build this entire website, and if I did put it on my resume, I would need to mention the specific contributions that I made as this was a community project. But it makes such a great project for a resume, which is why I'm showing it to you. So first of all, in order to use this site, you need to sign in with GitHub. So immediately that demonstrates that we know how to interact with an API and kind of bring an integration into our site. Now this entire site is built with Django, it's a whole Python backend, and then obviously we have some HTML and JavaScript styling showing that we know some other languages as well. So we have a nice landing page here, you can see we can join the Discord server, or we can view the current Timothon. So if I view the current Timothon, this is a competition that was happening, this was about a year ago that it was going on, and we have different roles. So notice here that I'm kind of an admin user, so I have the ability to end the Timothon, start team creation, start submissions, start voting, the different phases of the competition. I can view the different submissions here. So if I go here, I can view all of them from the different teams that enrolled. Let's go back, and I have the ability to judge as well. So we can go here and we can view all the comments from the judges, we can view the different categories, 
And you can see this is actually a pretty sophisticated website and the team that built this put a quite a bit of work into this. So as an individual, this would take a long time to build, but I think it's a really, really great project that demonstrates so many different skills. And again, is really built for a real purpose and allows you to talk about why you needed to make this. Now let's go back to the homepage here. You can see that we can view the Timothon history and we can see who won in the previous Timothons. So we have these winners, we can view all of their different projects. We can go to something like unreleased. There's no unreleased challenges, so there's nothing there. And then we can view things like the rules, etc. There's a lot of other features here and depending on what type of user you're signed in as, you'll have different permissions on the site. But the reason I really love this project is because it ticks all four of those boxes I talked about before. It's unique, it has that wow factor, it's easy to understand, it's for grading a custom coding competition. It's something that was built for a real purpose that has a story behind it and that's interesting to tell in an interview and it definitely demonstrates a lot of different capabilities, at minimum building an entire site with Django, but also user management, interacting with different APIs, having some JavaScript and some HTML, and it's sufficiently complex that if someone saw this on a resume and you were able to explain it to them, they'd know that you know Python and specifically know the Django framework. Now again, I didn't build this entirely by myself, but I could have if I wanted to, and if I had done that, I would definitely put this on my resume, and it would be a great project that I could talk a lot about in an interview. So the next project we're looking at is one of my all-time favorites, and this is an AI learning how to play the game of Flappy Bird. Now this is great because not only did I code out the AI, but I also coded out the game of Flappy Bird. Now as I said before, we want to pick projects that kind of fit different categories based on the role that we're applying to. So this one would be more for an AI or machine learning type position and could maybe even fit into data science as well, although it's a little bit different than that. Anyways, let's run the code here and I'll kind of explain to you how this works and why I love this project. So this uses something called neuroevolution of augmented topologies, otherwise known as NEAT. Now this is an evolutionary algorithm that trains an AI how to play a game through multiple different iterations and generations. In this case, we have about 50 birds in one generation. It then takes the best performing birds from that generation, kind of breeds them together and combines some of their parameters. And eventually we end up with a bird that can go through the different pipes. So the reason I really love this project is it's visual, it's easy to understand, it has that wow factor because someone wants to ask, hey, how did you do that? How did you train an AI how to play Flappy Bird? We built it for a purpose because we wanted to actually do something related to machine learning and AI. We wanted to maybe complete Flappy Bird, maybe it's one of our favorite games, we can come up with a decent story on why we wanted to build this. And then we actually have the showcase of our capabilities. Building an AI is not simple, especially using something like Neat. It's a more advanced technique and algorithm. And we can explain to the interviewer how it works, right? It's an interesting story. We can showcase our knowledge of AI and machine learning by explaining how the Neat algorithm operates. And I just think it makes a really, really great project. And everyone that I've showed this to has really enjoyed it, even if they're a non-programmer. So hopefully you're getting the idea here. Things that are visual, things that are easy to understand, that are sufficiently complex, that's what we're going for here. And all the projects I've showed you so far, immediately you can see the value from them and you can see how we could craft a really great story and really demonstrate our skills in an interview. A project is not just there to be read, it's there to be explained and elaborated on and you can really use that to your advantage when you're actually in an interview. You can point to those different projects and say, because of this project, I did this, this, and this, that's why you should consider me for this role. So the last project I have for you falls more into the automation category and it has a really strong purpose because it's something a lot of businesses actually legitimately need. It's showing that you can build something that does solve a real world problem and does have real world value. Anyways, let's get into it here and I'll quickly talk about kind of how it works and then run you through the code a little bit. So this project uses a combination of Python, specifically it uses Flask for a backend API, and then it uses React and JavaScript on the front end to actually render out and kind of visualize the website. Now this demonstrates that you know how to use Python in its correct purpose, more for backend type languages, and how to combine it with other languages, which is a good skill and shows that you know more than simply just Python. So what we can do here with this is we can actually track the price of different products across amazon.com. Now what I could do is I could type in a product here, maybe I wanna track the prices of soap or something, and then I can start this web scraper. And what this does is go to Amazon, scrape all the products that match this filter, in this case it's soap, and then it will return a list to us and store them in a database. So it's a multi-step process, some of it's handled by Python, some of it's handled by the front end, and it makes a really good project because there's a lot of stuff that you 
can explain, and it's fairly complex. Yet, it's easy to understand, just the implementation is complicated. So if I scroll down here, you can see that for something like an RTX 4080, it's showing me the last price. I scraped this on March 3rd, that was the last time, and then any price change. In this case, if I look at this one, we can see that there's been a bunch of price changes here, and it's tracking all of those different changes for this specific tower. So kind of an interesting tool, and you can see how businesses could use this in the e-commerce space. A lot of these don't have any price changes, that's fine. You can see that it just shows you the actual tower right here. Now, if I click on something else like my DDR5 RAM, same thing, we can see any of the different price changes. We can view DDR5 RAM, we can view the product on Amazon, or in this case, this one was on Newegg because it does it on multiple different sites. And now let me quickly explain to you how this actually operates so you can see the Python component for it. So in my code here, you can see that I have a back end, a front end, and then a tool that actually runs this on a schedule. This uses Python as well, just to automatically send a request to the back end API to actually initiate the scraping. Now, this is a little bit complicated to explain in a minute or two. I'm gonna to try to go really quickly. You can see that I have a Flask API set up here. And what this will do is actually go to amazon.com. It uses something called Bright Data. We don't need to talk about that here. That does some automated web scraping, gets the results back to the API, and then it saves that in a database and then returns the results to the front end. So it's doing two things, right? It's actually initiating the different scraping, going to the site, grabbing those different products, storing them in a database. And it's also communicating with the front end and giving the data that the front end needs. So it's showing that we know how to separate out different concerns, how we handle the data on the back end and then push that to the front end, how we interact with the database and how we write a Flask API. So you can see that I have some database models here, right? For a product result, for my tracked product, because there's some products that you can actually track and they'll automatically be scraped every day every hour, whatever time period you want. We have a few different endpoints that we've written here. This one is to get the different results. So we're posting the results to this endpoint when they're received. And there's a bunch of other stuff that goes on here. I actually have an entire video walking through this project that I will link on screen. The idea is it's a pretty complicated backend. There's a lot of stuff going on. We have something for the API. We have something for the web scraper. You can see there's a bunch of code here that actually does the web scraping itself. We're communicating with different endpoints using a REST API. And then we have a front end that's displaying all of that information. So having that on a resume and being able to walk through that very clearly in an interview is going to show you really know what you're doing. You know how to build a large project. You know how to solve different problems. And you know how to connect different components together, which is what a lot of companies are looking for. So with all that said, let's wrap up by going through a few key tips you want to keep in mind when you're actually determining your resume projects. First of all, when you're building a resume project, always try to build something that has a good story, has a good reason behind it. Something that you can actually point to and say, hey, the reason I needed this project was because of this issue that I faced. That's what you do as a software engineer. You solve problems and you build products that help everyday people. So being able to explain that, how you went from the problem to the solution and the different design decisions that you made is really important and stands out a lot more than purely the complexity of your project. It's also really important to make sure that your projects stand out. They have that wow factor and the people actually want to look at them. If you build the same thing that everyone else has built, an employer or a recruiter is not even going to click on the link. They're not even going to check it out. So make sure you're building something that's exciting that people actually want to look at and that they're going to ask you questions about. A lot of recruiters won't actually look at your projects before an interview. What they're going to do is ask you questions about them if they do eventually decide to bring you in. If you had a really, really impressive project, they might check it out briefly. That could be the reason that they actually invite you for an interview because they want to learn more about it and you stood out compared to a lot of other people. I know that I've had that happen to me. People have seen some of the projects and accomplishments that I had on my resume and invited me purely because they were interested in that. They didn't necessarily think they were going to give me a job, but they said, hey, this this guy looks a little bit different than all these other candidates. Let's invite him in. Let's see what he's about. So just another way to make yourself stand out, have that wow factor, make sure people can understand what it is, and also make sure if possible, it's easy for someone to actually view the project. If it's a simple website URL, that's the best. They can just click on it, it opens up. If it requires a bunch of install steps and they have to set it up on their local computer, people just aren't going to do that. They're lazy, right? So the more visual and easier you can make it for someone to access your project, the better it's going to be and the higher chance they're actually going to look at it. So with that said, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.